Dudes, last week was sweet. As you know, I was out hanging with Ying with Dorby Works out in Florida. We did the Riva Motorsports show. That show was sweet. The little, it was a motorcycle show at a dealership. There was a bunch of food trucks, some beer, some bunch of ruckuses, some groms, some big bikes. There was a little bit of everything, and it was mega sweet. The next day, we did that Orlando first ride, and there was literally like 60 freaking bikes, like a couple mopeds, uh, a bunch of uh, groms, a bunch of ruckuses. I thought it would be like the perfect setting to do a documentary style, uh, a documentary basically. I got, I got a bunch of little pans of like bikes and we interviewed a bunch of people uh, in the game and some newbies revolving all around the Honda Ruckus. It, it's going to turn out really good. I am not probably won't have that done for a little while. I, I'm going to do some stuff like at the Key West Contride and a few different scooter events. Maybe I'll see you there. You can be in the documentary. But make sure you hit that little blue bell that's down on the side. Uh, so you get notified of new videos that come out and then hit that subscribe button of course if you want to find me on Instagram I post about every day too but enough of the, the jabbering let's do episode three check this thing out that wheel turned out sweet you could do two different ways you can do bolts, or you can do like studs with lug nuts. This application, we're doing bolts. Dude, what? Look at this thing. I can't get over it. Freaking love it. Since I got it on its wheels, I want to put the kickstand on. That way I can kind of lean it over and put the jack stand underneath on one side. Come with some uh, washers, small one, big one. We're gonna want red Loctite, like a lot of it, because this is the kickstand. Big washer, small washer, because the small washer fits right in that hole perfectly. So it doesn't walk around on there. And then we can slide this up underneath. We're trying to get line that small washer up in the hole there. Meanwhile, not moving it too much because we don't want to scratch this beautiful pink frame. There it is. We got these kickstands on the website. Nice and snug. We can actually uh, extend this longer. Something like that. That's probably better. Then you got a lock nut. Look at this exhaust, you guys. Two Brothers Racing. Carbon fiber. With the header, and it's got the O2 bung. You can put a wide band O2 sensor in there. Look at the angle. Goes up like that. And the pipe. Hooks up like that. Is that not sweet or what? All right, then we've got our little band here. Slide this puppy on. Seat frame? Yes, please. That is a healthy looking scoot right there. Look at that sucker. Holy moly. We're here at Aldo's shop. We got Victor here. He just built the custom seat for the Honda Ruckus. This is suede. Did a good, really good job. Flip it over, you see. Yeah. And then up underneath. Yeah. Everything's up, stapled up, real nice. Yeah. Perfect. It's clean, clean. That works clean. Yep. Very clean. Thanks, Victor. Yeah, man. Thank you. We can have these seats done for you, of course. I need to get the brackets set up on here, but let's get the seat on. Dang it! You know what? 
these things didn't get powder coated. I don't know if we even thought about that. But that's going to look really, really weird if it's not, these aren't black on here. So I'm going to paint them. We'll get these painted up. Well, if we can't do the seat, we'll get this uh, gas tank in there. We're going to be doing the Honda Metro float so that it'll read the um, fuel level actually. I'm gonna call it for tonight. I gotta let that paint dry. And uh, I don't wanna bolt this thing down because I gotta lift this up to put the wires underneath. But pretty much all I have left is like the wiring. And then we're, we're good to go and the fuel pump, of course. What's up you guys, back at it again. And holy balls upon honkers. You gotta see this. You thought I was gonna show you the ruckus. I have got a zit the size of freaking Jupiter, 37 years old. The guy's still getting zits, for God's sakes. You can call me Rudolph for the rest of this episode. Anyway, I'm gonna put the wiring in this. We've, got, we've gotten quite a bit, bit of it done. Got the, this is kind of just placed on there. I'm gonna have to pull that off. I've got a rack that goes on here. There's a few things that need to be buttoned up, but for the most part, everything is looking so dang good. I'm just loving it. So let's get this wiring done. So here is the harness we are using. I have no idea who makes this harness, um, but Jarrett bought this, the customer. And uh, it seemed, I told him it seemed like a decent one because they're using the original harness. I'm just gonna modify it to use my components. So I'm not gonna showcase this a lot because it's not our harness. When you run this Makuni vacuum operated fuel pump, you're asking for problems. Because what happens is a, Whenever you get suction on this hose, in and out, in and out, you're, you're, that's when it's delivering fuel. That's only happening when it's cranking or the engine is started. So if you have no fuel, like the fuel is evaporated after a couple weeks of sitting, there's no gas in this unit, and you're just gonna be cranking, cranking, it's gonna be cranking, 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 going up like just a little bit up the line each time. Pretty soon your battery's dead, and then you have major problems. This is, this is never a good idea for reliability, the vacuum operated um, fuel pump, Makuni fuel pump. Like with our harness, we use uh, you know, the factory fuel pump from Honda. That's always the best option. And that's good all the way up to like 232cc. I never even had problems. So it supplies enough fuel for all GUI6 engines with my experience. The reason why we can't use the, after, or the factory fuel pump is because this harness is not using the original ECU. And we're using like a aftermarket rectifier regulator. The reason why our harness is a little bit better is because we use the factory e ECU, which powers the fuel pump, and it's the rectifier regulator, the thing I just showed you here. So we're gonna adapt it, but we definitely wanna use the electric fuel pump, and then I'm gonna wire in my EVI. So we're gonna make this harness super reliable, and we won't use this uh, the Chinese um, CDI box anymore as well. So we're really gonna improve this harness. Then we'll remove this gas cap cover, because I'm not gonna need that doing the wiring. I'm actually gonna remove this too, just temporarily. So if you notice, the ECU is not here. This is where it would normally be. And in order to like wire this up as like a half-assed job, I could like zip tie this here and that. But why would I do that when I have a customer paying me to build this? Two options, stainless steel, nah, carbon fiber, oh yeah, we're gonna do some carbon fiber. Carbon fiber plate right there, then we can double side tape or screw things right to this. I'm gonna cut it out. I already uh, pre uh, did everything, all the holes that I need to drill, so do that really quick. Look at this, look at that, look at this, look at that. That is a component plate. And I just drilled some holes, got some little carbon fiber fibers in my lungs now. So I'll probably put a little uh, double side tape behind here. That way it's padded. You don't get a vibration once I tighten these down.
New day. I spent, I don't know, a couple, probably three and a half hours wiring this harness up, doing like all kinds of little things just to make it work the way that I want it to work. Um, now I'm now I'm to the point where I need to do the fuel. So like I've got the, a lot of this I didn't film just because, you know, it's, it's like very intricate wiring that's not gonna serve a purpose on film. But I've got the lights wired up, um, just, just sitting there barely. Uh, I got the carbon fiber plate on with the rectifier. Everything's wired up. I made everything kind of nice. Mounted this guy here. I ran, I got rid of the uh, Chinese uh, AC CDI, installed my DC CDI. Runs down, goes into the motor there. Got the tail light wired in, and along with the starter and all that stuff. Um, so, what I have left is I gotta install this speed sensor. Right now, if I turn the key on, I got the fancy lights, LED, got the gauge, and then I have, it'll, it'll crank over. I've just unplugged the start button. So everything works, blinkers, there's a left blinker. I had to install this adjustable, which is on our website, LED flasher unit, brake lights work. Things I still need to do, I'm gonna do this off cam. Brake sensor, and you know the sensor down here of course. Gotta get that done. And what else? Oh, I'm probably gonna have to be riding around on the, the bike while I, I can't put all the stuff up on top of here because I'm gonna need to adjust this fuel sensor. And if I put the body panel, you know, the NCY cover and all this stuff back on, then I can't adjust it, so. It's gonna be kind of half put together for a little while, but she is looking pleasant. That is for sure. As I burn the battery down, I got a lithium battery in there. If you're, uh, if it's in your budget, always do lithium for sure. Oh yeah, and then the high and low beam works there and up here. Blinkers work up there. Right now it says the gas is full, which isn't right because that's all the way down. So that's kind of like, that took me a bunch of time to do on the last one. So gotta do that, get back in business. Oh, I also installed the little start button. So that works and I already verified that we have spark. So the unknowns right now is, um, does this kill the engine and where am I gonna mount this thing? And I still have to mount our fuel pump, which is our new rolling wrench electric fuel pump. And that mounts right down here, just like that. And then it's a, an electric pump that plugs in right here. I also made this, this used to be our coil wire, and I've converted that over to make a power wire for the fuel pump. So, get that stuff done, oh yeah.